I am on my way to Fort Craig here in New Mexico. Don't know much about it, but I'm going to learn a little bit. They have this little stop off where I'm at now. Here they have information about the signs, the hours, the facilities. And then over here, they got little placards to tell you about it. So let's go see what that says. And I guess you can hike out here, naturally. Here they talk about time and perspective. And so Fort Craig is right there. Socorro, Albuquerque. Look over here, Mule Shoe, Texas, Amarillo, Texas. Pretty neat. Neat stuff. Here we are guarding the trail. And it says the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo ended the war between the United States and Mexico in 1848. Mexico surrendered more than half of its land to the U.S., Trade along El Camino Real, then known as the, oh boy, Chahula Trail, continued, but now linked the two nations. U.S. military quickly built forts and stationed soldiers along the trail to protect caravans and secure the lands. How about that? Journey of the Dead Man. The mountains on the horizon, pictured below, and... Picture there are the start of the Jornada de Muerto, which means Journey of the Dead. Check that out. This is what's called the Royal Road from Mexico City all the way up to Santa Fe, New Mexico. And I'm right there. That's what it says. I'm there. And all this time I thought I was here. <laughs> and here we have the geology of the Fort Craig area. The San Andreas Mountains. Caballo Mountains, that's down where I'm camped, near on uh, Caballo State Park. And part of the uh, Percha Dam. But they talk about the layers interesting stuff well i'm here at the visitor center i got a hiking trail so we're going to see what this is all about here at fort craig one of the interesting things about fort craig is that it was in operation for 30 years, a little over 30 years, but it was also involved in the Civil War, believe it or not. It was lasted one day, one war. The bloody Civil War battle was fought near Cactodaro, Mesa, directly ahead across the Rio Grande on February 21st, 1862. Another interesting fact is that at one time, 5,000 people occupied this area. You consider all those small towns in New Mexico, they don't have near 5,000 people. Interesting. The trail down from the visitor center to the fort is about a half mile. And the trail's pretty well cleared, as you can see. However, the gentleman in the visitor center did say that if you come across a trail with a bunch of green and shrubs and tumbleweeds on it, he recommends not going down there. Snakes are out. Snakes are out. Lizards are out. Just be careful. I'm welcome to go down it, but he just recommends, and he says you're not going to miss anything on those trails. He said he's pretty much cleared off all the important ones. The remains of this structure are what's called the guardhouse and the sally port. Now the sally port was something I had never heard of until I happened to read it right there. Sally port was the main entrance of the fort and was a gate wide enough for wagons and mounted troops to pass through in column formation. How about that? This area right here are the parade grounds and enlisted quarters 
about 1867. Let's go take a look. Look at that flagpole, it's wood. And lashed together right up there and goes up. How about that? This is the ground plan of the whole fort. Pretty interesting. Sally Port, Main Gate Guardhouse. Well, let's walk around and see what we can see. So I guess this is where the Sally Port and Guard is. So I went here and I'm going left and I'm going to do this. That's the plan anyway. Let's get to it. This is the commanding officer's quarters. I guess that was one wall. Don't know how far back the uh, structure went. Let's go around the corner and see if we can find out. Ah, that what tells the story. You can see the uh, corner piece right there. Hey, I even detect a slight echo. Interesting. This must have been the front. That looks like a straight up and down wall, so it could be narrow and comes all the way out to here. But that was the commanding officer's quarters. There's not a sign saying what this is. There is a sign that says, please stay off the walls. Wal ruined walls are unstable and irreplaceable. If you look there, you can see what they did was they made mud bricks and stacked them up. So they use this for something. Okay, here's some more of the uh, mud walls and a brick wall on the back there, a stone wall. I shouldn't say brick wall. Looks like it had a stone wall out around the perimeter to help support the mud wall. But this sign says that these were storehouses. Fort Craig was never officially designated an official supply depot, but it often served as a central location for disbursement of supplies to other posts. How about that? This is a doggone long one. <laughs> That's what she said. Bath. Back here we have Earthworks Wayside. What do you think that means? I have my ideas. <laughs> in the course of continuing efforts of Fort Craig troops to protect settlers and travelers from Indian raids in New Mexico and Arizona, Encounters with the Navajo Indians were common. The Navajos were hunting and gathering nomads. Ha! A nomad who had arrived in the southwest in the early 1500s from the north and the west. So how about that? And then Apache were here too. They entered the southwest in the early 1500s, according to our anthropologist. And there were wars with the Indians, naturally. And the Apache scouts were employed by the United States Army. But we are sort of up here on a ridge, so this was a good visual focal point to see the enemy approaching. Which is really kind of neat and smart. Now here is a resemblance of a wall, remaining rocks. I don't know if this was like the outer barrier of the fort, quarters or what. There's not really a plaque here to describe it. If I find out, I'll say something. Well, this is the back wall that I just mentioned. And you can't tell that there's a corner. But here the wall comes this way. And then it goes on there. And since I noticed that it went on there, I decided to read this placard. It says that the, this is mainly the corral and stables. And one reason they chose this area is because of the abundance of hay and feed an open area to roam their horses and take care of them. So that's one reason of many why Fort Craig is here. 
was also to protect against the Indian raids, give the people a chance. It was also the road from Mexico City all the way up to Santa Fe, a good stopover point. And it was also used for, even though it wasn't designated as a supply distribution center, it was utilized in such a manner. Well, this is an area of the trail where it hasn't really been cleaned and taken care of and it's green that I theoretically, according to him, should avoid or be cautious for snakes and whatnot. But it doesn't last long and I'm keeping my eyes open. So we're going to walk along this trail. <laughs> Never let it say I quit. Well, you can't see it here. But one time this was Hospital Row. So we'll just pretend. <laughs> and just around the corner from Hospital Row, we have to pretend again. Because this is New Hospital. Work was begun in the new hospital in 1869, but it was not finished until 1874 or later. How about that? That's what it was supposed to look like. All right, we're going to do a little more pretending right here in this area. This, believe it or not, was the officers' quarters. These buildings housed officers with their families and servants, including the original post commander, before special quarters were built across the parade ground. The 1873 Surgeon General's report describes them as well finished, being plastered within and, out, within and without. All the quarters of the officers are heated with open fireplaces and well lighted windows. Captain Jack Crawford, known as the Poet Scout, was post sutler trader through most of the 1800s, 1880s and lived in one of these quarters with his family as custodian of the fort for some years after it was decommissioned. This way to the Battle of Valverde Wayside. Let's go see. The Battle of Valverde. You may be surprised to learn that a bloody confrontation of the Civil War was fought only a few miles from Fort Craig. The main Battle of Valverde was fought in the winter of February 21st, 1862. Right out there. And remember I told you to pretend about the hospital and the new hospital? It was basically right over there. How convenient for them to fight a battle right by the hospital. <laughs> Just me, making stuff up, thinking outside the box. This wall was built in 2014 using the same measurements and dimensions as the original equipment. But it was done by the Bureau of Land Management. They wanted to construct a portion of the historical earthquakes in honor of the soldiers that built the fort. I just wanted to convey the magnitude of the fortifications and the labor required to build them. How about that? There's some nice facilities here if you want to come and spend the day and camp. Well, you can't camp, I should say picnic. You got open air, and then if you need a shelter, you got this. And then there's a second one back here. So you can make a day of this and enjoy your visit to Fort Craig. Okay, I'm going to sit down here a little and tell you something else I learned. Fort Craig got its name from a commander named Craig. And during the uh, establishment of the fort and afterwards, there were always Mexican and American wars going on. <clears throat> but Commander Craig was with the U.S. Army. And he was well liked by a great many of his soldiers. However, he had some deserters, and I guess they didn't like him. So lo and behold, he took his men and went after to get the deserters. He was going to charge them. But there was a great firefight, battle, gunslinging, and everything else that ensued. And Commander Craig got killed in the battle. And so the soldiers, in honor of Craig, named this Fort Craig after him, for going after the deserters. And now you know the rest of the story.
This is the dirt road you have to take to get to Fort Craig. It's five miles long. It's washboardy in a lot of places, but there are some smooth spots. But I will say, Fort Craig is pretty interesting. It's kind of worth it. Hey everyone, hope you're having fun. I am, and you should be too. Oh yeah. Door-to-door -door salesman came up to Rose's door, tried to sell her a coffin. Rose said, that's the last thing I'll ever need. <laughs>